Gregory Suzuki YouTube channel. What is going on? Yeah, go ahead. We're talking about fixing ECM computers in the Suzuki Samurai, fuel injection models, of course. Uh, 89 through 95 Geo Tracker, Suzuki Sidekick. This is a common problem due to the age of the capacitors and they start failing on you. If you have not had the problem yet, you will, unless your computer's already been rebuilt which you still want to know what's going on. So that's what this video is about. We're going to show you what these computers are, where to locate them, um, how to diagnose, a uh, little diagnostic, you know, check on, you know, is that the problem, is that not? So first things first, let's go into what they look like, where they're located. So for a 1989 or 1990 Geo Tracker, those two years are unique. They have a gold ECM found in the driver's side under the dashboard close to where your left knee would be touching the dashboard, held in with some Phillips head screws. Looks like this, gold, golden color. Yours isn't gold, it's not gonna work for your 89 or 90. Now, if you have a 91 through 95 GeoTracker Suzuki Sidekick, same location, same box, but silver. Silver in color, same situation. Now, let's say you got the old Samurai, old faithful, 1990 through 95 fuel injected samurai this will be under the passenger side glove box uh on behind the glove box on the firewall it's got these longer legs because it mounts a little bit different um these are harder to come by they didn't make very many fuel injection samurais so if you have one hold on to it someone's gonna want it don't get rid of it so these are the parts that you're looking for if you have trouble locating it under the dash contact me and i'll I'll give you a little advice, but this is the situation. Now, the main um, problems you may be experiencing if you have a bad computer is no fuel, no spark. Now, we have made a previous video on testing your fuel pump, testing the wiring going to the back of the vehicle, so I will post a link to that video. So the very first thing you wanna do is see if, hey, do I have a wiring issue, a fuel pump problem, or is it a computer problem? So I'll post a link to that video. That'll help um, almost all the time on a Samurai if you have an issue. People spend a lot of money on igniters, coils, distributors, injectors. I mean, when I first got into this stuff, I, I did the same thing. I was like, hey, I'm not getting any fuel. I'm buying these expensive injectors. I'm buying all these parts. Nothing's getting fixed. Then I type up on the old computer, you know, the old interwebs there, Zuari forum, and they're like, dude, you got a bad computer, get that thing fixed. I uh, sent it out, got it repaired, boom, fired up immediately. That was uh, 15 years ago, you know, so now I'm, I'm, I'm helping you guys to save some money. And um, this is a very cheap fix if you're trying to do it yourself. The capacitors are cheap to replace. If they haven't caused more damage, if they, I'll sh open these up. If they cause more damage, then yeah, we don't know yet. But, but to just replace the capacitors is cheap and easy. That's what we're gonna show you. Um, we're gonna open up one now to, to show you what you're looking for. So let's say you think, hey, my, my computer could be bad. Um, the easiest thing, there's going to be four screws. The easiest thing is going to be to open it up and just take a quick look. See, hey, what the hell is going on inside this contraption? So I got most of the screws out for video's sake. So now you're going to have your four screws. You're going to lift the back side up because you have your plugs in front. So you're going to lift your back side up. Take your, your top cover. Now we got the computer board out. Our camera woman's going to come around and show you the circuit board now. So now this is this is where you want to be. Now the ca capacitors are these cylinders. So these are the main ones that start going bad. There's a little guy here. Uh, each computer will be a little bit different structure. Now on this one, if you can zoom in and see, this one's been leaking. There you go. And you see how dirty and nasty it is? You can see all this stuff around here and all this corrosion. Um, this capacitor has been leaking. This one over here has been leaking too, but uh, it's not as noticeable. So that's what you're going to be looking for first. But now let me show you another one that I popped this, this ugly beast off. Now I popped the cap. I mean, look at that. Right there, you're like, ooh-wee. 
Someone's been smoking up. So this one caught on fire. So now you can see this capacitor. This one burnt through the board. You see that? This is catastrophic failure. This one you're not going to be able to re replace because it burnt through the board. So this one's probably just junk. So hopefully, I mean, this doesn't happen that often, but that that's kind of the thing is you got to catch it before it's too bad. So like on the one we're talking about here, you can take a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and you can clean up a lot of these guys down here, clean up all around your resistors and stuff and clean all that up uh, and so forth. So now what we're going to do is remove this board. There's going to be four screws going around. So now we're actually going to remove the board from the metal casing. Okay. So now, oh, we got two more screws over here. I forgot to mention. So there's two on the side. I just have one in there. So this goes a little quicker. Now we're going to pull out the board because that's how we're going to replace this. So now this is the back of the board. Front of the board, back of the board. So now we're going to have to remove this to work on it. Now, again, these are the capacitors. Now I'm going to show you where I got this kit. This kit came from Blend Door, an awesome company that I've been buying stuff from for a while. The owner's name is Will. Uh, some of you may know him as Billet Bill because he makes some badass billet parts for geo trackers, uh, soft top clips, and stuff like that. But what he does is provide capacitors specifically for this. He even includes some kits with the soldering iron and all the goodies. So if you want to buy this stuff from him, it's blenddoor.com. I will post a link on the video here when I edit the video. Otherwise, if you have an electronic shop, you could also buy the replacement capacitors there. Us old guys, you know, we used to go to Radio Shack and get stuff. I, I've been recently told that they don't exist anymore. I just found this out. So, all right. So you can't go to Radio Shack, I guess. But anyway, his kit just kicks ass because it's got all the correct, uh, the correct ones ready to go. And you don't got to guess and so forth. So I recommend that. It's cheap. They're like 12 bucks shipped to your door. Get your capacitors. You're looking good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And then I'm going to get into show how to remove the capacitor from the board. Uh, and solder the new one in. Clean it up a little bit. Screw it back together, plug it in, and fire it up, and do some burnouts on the mud. You know what I'm talking about? We'll be right back. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, we're back. So this is the capacitor we're going to replace in the video because it's easiest to see. These are the three we got from Mr. Will, a.k.a. Billet Bill, over at Blendor.com. These are our replacements. You will see that the replacement is smaller Although it has the same number characteristics, over the last 25 years, technology has changed. So capacitors are, are, you know, normally smaller. You will find in electronics. So don't be don't be afraid that you got a smaller part. Um, you will have to make sure that your plus side is labeled on the board, but you can see the minus side. Minus side is the shorter of the two wires coming off. The longer side is the positive. So when you reinstall it, you'll just have to take note of those, which I'll mention again. But now we're going to, we got our soldering iron nice and hot. Don't burn yourself like I do. Um, on the back side now, this one had been worked on. A lot of your guys, you open up, you're probably going to see other people worked on it. If you had a sticker like this that says do not remove or don't tamper with, don't, don't F with this thing because I worked on it, that means somebody... Somebody already worked on it and they don't want you to void their warranty by, you know, doing your doing your little techniques on it. So if you had a sticker, it's already been worked on. Doesn't mean it still couldn't be bad. Now you're going to take your soldering iron. If you have these little nubs on there, you might have to snap those tits off. Just ah, get them down, get them down to the bare solder so that when you heat this up, you heat up both sides. You kind of got to be quick about it. And you're going to be pulling the capacitor through on the back side. So you're going to heat them both up. And this is your bad capacitor that we're going to be replacing. 
And this is the new capacitor that we're going to be sticking in place. So the next thing we're going to be doing, um, I'm going to heat up these two, the two holes that it slides through. And there's going to be solder clogged in there. So I'm going to heat those up. I'm going to grab a, a pin or a toothpick and clean out the holes. So I'll be right back and show you that process in just a second. Okay, guys. So if you can see this pin in the video, this is what I'm going to use to stick through the holes to make sure they're cleared. So I'm going to take my soldering iron, the very tip of it, and then I'm going to come through the backside with the pin, if you can see that. So now we got holes to stick our, our new capacitor through. So now we're going to do that for both holes. Now on the other side, I have a bottle of isopropyl alcohol that I soaked a Q-tip in. Now if you can come in here, camera lady, you can see it's all filthy dirty here where that capacitor goes. So I'm just going to keep keep scrubbing her up, clean her up. So you're just going to keep cleaning her up, get a little more alcohol on there, get all that residual acid off the board and so forth. Clean it up as best as you can. And then we're going to grab our new capacitor and in the next shot we'll show you reinserting it and soldering it in. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we got our new capacitor in there. Again, we've got negative facing the plug, positive facing the other side. Um, negative is the shorter wire again, positive is the longer. So we've got her punched through. For the video I tacked that one in place so the capacitor doesn't move around. We're just going to bend over our other wire a little bit. And then we're going to take our soldering iron. I am not the world's best solderer, so forgive me for bad solder on camera. But this is what you're basically doing is soldering that piece in place. So now you can melt them again and get a better penetration if you'd like. Otherwise, you are basically going to take your nipples hanging up. You are going to cut off the excess so they're not hanging off. So you're going to cut off, cut off your excess like that. Now your new capacitor is installed. You're going to go through the other ones. The other couple, replace those two. You're going to clean up any part of the circuit board like we discussed to make sure there's no gunk. Give everything a good look over. And we're going to reassemble it. We'll be right back to discuss the rest of the operation. Okay. Ah, yeah. All right, at this point, you are feeling good because you did your repairs. You're just like, yeah, ah, yeah, I'm a badass. I just did my own repairs that cost, you know, 10 times as much if, if you paid some guy to do it. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing it and you need help, uh, if you have a local like electronics guy that works on, you know, stereo equipment, stuff like that, they could easily knock this out for you if they don't mind doing a little side job. Otherwise, contact us. We will also put a link in the description or in the video of the company that we've been using for, for 15 years. This guy does great work. He warranties his work for a lifetime. So again, if you don't feel comfortable, I recommend trying it yourself um, if you don't see mega damage to the board. If there's other resistors and stuff that needs repair, you know, then you're getting into some stuff and you might want to hire the, the professional. So we will uh, uh, give you that information to, to talk to him. Otherwise, give it a shot. Contact uh, Blendor. Get those $12 parts and, and just give it a shot. So now you got, you got it done. And now you're just going to simply put it back in your case. You're going to put your four screws down here, your two screws in the side. Give it a quick look over. Make sure you did everything and cleaned everything up. And you're going to put your cap back on. Cap this side down to go over the plugs and then you're going to put your four screws in Whoop. put your four screws in around the sides and now you got your, your assembled computer that you're going to plug back in and what i would recommend is you just have the wires hanging down and just plug her in ring ring ring, ring, ring boom and fire her up you don't even you don't want to button this back up all all up in there like that and realize it didn't do the trick so just fire it up with the thing hanging down if she fires up then you know you're good and put it all back together. But for the most part, that is 
that's it. That's as simple as it is. If it do, if it hadn't caused that fire burning, breathing nasty stuff you saw in the in the other one that we took apart, if it's not a catastrophic failure, you can probably just replace the capacitors. And if it hasn't failed yet, it's a very good idea to replace the capacitors before you're stuck in the middle of nowhere or on the freeway or wherever. So that's what you're going to want to do. Um, and if you've been watching. Our buddy Muskoff Vinyl Designs, he sent these, you know, we got them YouTube followers. We're, we're creeping up on 9,000 followers, guys. Come on now. So he was cool enough to send us this. We're going to give some of these away in our giveaway, or if you want one, um, we're going to put a link to Muskoff Vinyl Designs. He makes all kinds of samurai, sidekick, whatever the hell you want made out of vinyl, he will cut it and make a shirt. He might even make these shirts. I see you guys seeing this shirt. He might make one for you. I don't know, but... He makes some cool stuff. So thank you guys for watching. Everything uh, we showed was, was something you're going to need at some point if you own one of these vehicles. Don't be afraid to try it yourself. It's a cheap, easy repair. And uh, we're going to put a link. We'll put a link to that fuel pump video I was talking about. Subscribe to our channel. Go grab a Miller High Life. Celebrate that you fixed your truck for $12.99. Ah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with a new video. Ah, yeah. Thanks for watching, Highway 83.